Hi everybody, welcome to Gumpa TV. Hey guys. Brought to you by Hobbling Japan. Episode 156 here. 156. 156. Uh, we are getting old. Yeah, it's, we're being in triple digits forever. <laughs> it's not gonna change. Okay, so today you can see, I got a special guest here now. For those of you who don't know what this guy is or haven't seen him before, we were building him on the live stream last yes, week. Yes, that is still up and available yes. to watch if you want. Yes, and being a, a big master grade, it takes a considerable amount of time and we didn't get them all done in the live stream, no. but I've got everything done now and I'm gonna talk about him in, in greater detail and kind of show you the gimmicks and whatever else this guy has. And uh, before that, Ryan? Oh, there is some very big news. It's, okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to the Tokyo Game Show. Yeah, we're going to the Tokyo Game Show. So I managed to convince my boss that we needed to go to the Tokyo <laughs> Game Show. And, and the good news is, mm -hmm. well, it's going to be weird for us because there's no Gundam-related stuff there other well, than there maybe some games. There might be the Gundam games, the PS3 game. But yeah, we're, uh, we're branching out. Yeah. Expect some game news. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Like, <laughs> we're big gamers. Or yeah, yeah, no, we, we, we love talking. So, we game. Uh, we game so. You know, I know um, I play a lot of, like, uh, the Final Fantasy games and stuff like that. And when I first started working at this company, I noticed that there's a, a lot of products for Final Fantasy, like the figures and the plushes and the games and the cards. Oh, yeah. This. And I never kind of realized the volume of stuff no, we have. that that had. So, we sell uh, a lot of game-related mm. items, if you didn't know. Yes, yes, yes. So that's why we're going. Yeah. We're going to see so we're, we see. we're excited. Okay. Um, and uh, speaking of exciting, we have new stuff on yes, the site now. Do you want to talk about that? Yep. All right. Now, uh, I actually saw this guy at the uh, Kara Hobby event. This yes. This is the, the Crossbone X1, and it's coming out as a new HG. A lot of people are really, really excited about this, of course, because it's, I think it's part of the uh, All Gundam project, where Bandai is trying to put out kind of everything and HG size, which has brought us the... Uh, the, the V Gundam and the V2, and now we're getting the F91 and the, the crossbow. So uh, come November, that's going to be a, a big month in terms of Gunpla. Mm -hmm. We're going to see the crossbow, and what else we're going to see? We're going the to big see news. that big thing. The big news, the announcement so far is the Astray Blue Frame D. It's a very reasonably priced. Yeah, actually, I'm, yeah, I'm kind of surprised at this price, although I think that's because uh, if you compare it to the first blue Astray, that came with that backpack that transformed into into that weapon that needed a special stand just to kind of hold on to it. Mm -hmm. So they've done away with that, which is quite a bit of plastic and quite heavy. So the price does drop a bit. And if you ask me, I actually prefer the look of this one. Yeah, it does look very good. It does look pretty cool with all the shoulders. And apparently all those little swords or whatever are just going to come off and he can, he can hold them in his hands. So that's November. And, uh, you know, November is one month before December when the big stuff comes. There were a couple of other announcements that we didn't have images for, like the Bear Guy 3 and mm. some weapon sets. So if you just come to the site, you can see it all. Yeah. All right, so there you have it. That's what's coming in the near future, a few months future. down the road. I mean, we're hoping that there's going to be some massive big announcement. Bandai's keeping things pretty quiet these yeah. days. So chances are they're probably working on something big. But we just don't know what it maybe is. Maybe we'll find so, out the Gunpla Expo. Well, or maybe at the Hobby Event. We have the month. Hobby Show and then the Gunpla Expo. Yeah. Hobby Show, we might get a glimpse of it. Gunpla Expo, I'm pretty sure we're going to get the full thing. Yeah. Because it'll be like a month before it hits the shelves or less. So that's what we're waiting for. But for now, we did have oh. some kits come in. Can I say one thing? Yeah. Uh, we thought we were going to be doing a live stream for the oh, Nightingale today. Yes, yes. And uh, yesterday we received a fax. A fax. And we, we read it, unlike mm. some people who work for the... <laughs> Fire department in Hiroshima. <laughs> anyway, we read the facts and it said uh, it has been delayed by a week. So that means no Nightingale live stream today. Next week should Friday. be Friday. Should be the twelfth. Twelfth? The twelfth. What if it comes in on the Thursday? Then we're very happy. Good. And it's we'll do it. Well if well either the Wednesday or the th the Thursday, the, or the Friday. Thursday or the Friday, yeah. We'll let you know, we'll do what we did last time. We'll put up the Facebook post and the picture or whatever else we have when that thing comes in. Everybody should be prepared to watch Thursday, 2 p.m. Japan time, or Friday earlier. Earlier. No. We hope, I mean, yes, we, we'd like to start it earlier. We'll just see when we get the kit. Yeah. Uh, it should be a humdinger. Oh, That's it's going to be so big. Yeah. All right. I'm going to take one home, and I'll also build a little bit as well. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's talk about... Oh, so, sorry, may I just touch this guy a little? Just get him off screen so I can you, look at you, him a you can, you can okay. hold him. Yeah, he's yeah, uh, just be careful. Support the head. <laughs> sorry, it's like a baby. Always support the head. It's like my know. baby. Yeah, okay. he's a beauty. But yeah, <laughs> sorry. Show he's us, show us what you got. All right, there. we'll talk about him in a lot of detail. So, here we go. Let's look at this one first. This is the Unicorn Gundam Phoenix. Now, Phoenix. We built one as a master grade when it was all gold coated and monstrous, and uh, now this comes out the SD. 
uh, reasonably reasonably priced compared to that big thing we built before. And the question I had when I kind of saw this is, what kind of gold are we getting? Mm -hmm. Everybody's got that question. Let's have a look here. I'll pull out the goldest runner here. They're all listed. this. This is the kind of color that it's we're going to get. It's not the bling bling you're used to. Yeah, well, uh, they can't make yeah. it mechy because that's so expensive. Yeah. And to be honest, like this gold doesn't look terrible. No, no. And as an SD kit, grab a can of spray paint and just paint the runners and, you know, it'll look fine. So I'm sure we'll see some customized Phoenixes oh, yeah. in the near future. Now you can just Thank take that. Much. Now another kit we showed at Shizuoka. Yes. And then I saw Tara Hobby. Mm -hmm. uh, the the Ingram from Pat Labor. And looked it really looked cool at the at the hobby show. It, it looked really looked cool. It looked really cool. Yeah. I saw it kind of like they had a display just for that at the Kara Hobby and they had different poses of it all over the place. And it looks it looks master grade ish. Yeah. In like kind of the detail and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And like we won't know unless we build it. I'm kind of tempted to build it, but uh, we might yeah. send it along to someone who put it together. But yeah, <laughs> yeah so if anybody is getting this and is going to build it, be sure to let us know and post some pictures on uh, a group somewhere on Hobbling TV yes. or on our Facebook, of course. I want to see. I'm, I'm really curious. I mean, I mean that looks it pretty It really cool. looked master grade at yeah. the show. Like, the detail yeah. was phenomenal. It looks good. Now, the high new. High Let's new. talk high new. We, uh, I rushed through as fast as I could when I was trying to do the live stream, mm -hmm. and even then, we only got it half done. I tried to show everybody what they, what they wanted to see, which meant I had like one arm, one leg, and like the backpack and some pin funnels done. So now I'm gonna talk about it in a lot more detail. I'll show you the gimmicks, I'll show you everything it comes with, and uh, I'll hopefully wow you just like it wowed me. All right, so with this high new here, you'll notice so I don't have the backpack on. Well, there's a reason for that. I'll talk about that in a second. But uh, one other reason for that is because I wanna be able to kind of show you the gimmicks, and if the backpack is on, it makes it's difficult to kind of reach in there and do this stuff, especially with the back of the legs. So let's start towards the top of the kit, of course. Um, this does take an LED. You can pull a whole back unit off of here if you like. I don't feel the need to do that. But if you're familiar with the, the new Gundam version car, you'll know it has the exact same neck and uh, unit here for the LED. So you can actually swap heads if you want. I don't know if that's what somebody wants to do, but you can do that. Uh, here's the shoulder. Now on the shoulder, it says that you can if I can get my hands around here, you can kind of open this up. And this is meant to kind of slide out, but I find it difficult to, to get at sometimes. So I think you're meant to pull these down first. And I don't know if it, that's actually like a locking me mechanism or just to get them out of the way. But uh, you can supposedly reach in here and pull this out. When I was uh, taking pictures of this in the studio, I found it a little bit difficult to actually get in there and, and make this happen. So, okay, there's a little bit. Now, these flaps here are actually meant to kind of, they say you can kind of fold them out a little bit, but they only will reach to that much as far, that's as far as they go. But I mean, that does give you a little bit more room with the, with the upper arm when you start swinging around. So now, next thing I want to show you is while we have this arm here, is uh, this here is meant to, if you open this up and kind of pop this up, you can put a beam saber handle in here. Now, here's the beam saber handle, it's very small. Uh, I'm gonna use this in a second, so I'm not gonna put it in there. Now, the gimmick on the other arm, I think is actually a little bit cooler. We'll swing this around here. This one, you're supposed to slide this forward and open this up and oh, whoa, out pops that weapon there. I oh, know, it's kind of a <laughs> strange color. I think I need to paint it, but you do get this kind of weapon and he can, of course, blast you with it. Right, let me pop this out to go for the full effect here. Now, uh, the skirts as well. I found the front ones a little hard to get into, but you can uh, open them like this. I'm not sure what function this serves, so we'll just leave them like that. And uh, the back skirts as well open up. You actually get two flaps, one here and then the second one here. I find it's easiest to open this one up first and kind of push in on this one, and then you can hook your finger in there, open it up. But the coolest gimmick on this kit has to be the legs. So we know the uh, new Gundam Virgin Ka had the cycle frame and you kind of extended certain areas to reveal the cycle frame. And the Sasabi Virgin Ka was similar in that it had the frame in the frame underneath and you would kind of open up the shoulder, open up the legs. On this one, you, you can open it up, but there's not really any, um, anything to show underneath except frame, although there's lots of detail in there. So if you want to get in there and use your, your paint or your paint marker, you can definitely make it look pretty nice here. 
And I'll open this up here and there's a, a thruster underneath there, like so. And there's also these flaps underneath the feet that we saw on the new Gundam as well. So let me just open this up here. That's a really cool gimmick actually. Yeah, the legs are pretty cool. How they're designed, I showed on the live stream, probably one of the more interesting parts of the build because this piece actually kind of drops in and then drops on this side and slides towards the back and then it's secured in place. It'll, it'll pivot whenever you need it to. So it's pretty cool here. Now you can see this is how the backpack attaches. And this is my backpack. I'm bringing it on for the first time here. Look at the size of this thing. <laughs> it's huge. It's, it's massive. And I don't have the fin funnels on here or anything like that yet. But look at the size of the fuel tanks. Now, these things are heavy. If I were to put uh, the fin funnels and the fuel tanks just like this, and if I were to you know, plug it onto the, the kit, he wouldn't be able to stand up. We saw it on the live stream, he starts to go back. I mean, he might go back until the fuel tanks touch, but he's still leaning back. And uh, Bandai, um, well, they couldn't get around it, so to speak, because they wanted to do this backpack like this with uh, the fin funnels like they've done it. Now, I actually uh, have the fin funnels here, but I'll put them on afterwards. So what we need first is this little piece here. Now, when you're building this, near the end of the build, after you finish the backpack, after you finish the kit, you have to use this piece and you actually have to then uh, use it to secure the backpack on the kit. So it goes like this and then it kind of goes up from underneath as it clips on. So maybe you have to close these up again for now. The first time I did it, I uh, seemed I was running into things and then I noticed that I fuel tanks were hanging down. So I kind of want to move them out of the way or even take them off entirely for now but we'll see if I can I can do this here so get up there and in click okay and there he is and there's that backpack and you can adjust this depending on how you have him standing so I'll try and get it pretty much flat there he is now he will have no problem standing from this point on so let's talk about the the backpack here's a beam saber and you're given th three of these beam saber handles and of course I showed one fits inside the arm here but uh, there's actually another place to put them, and it's right in here. Now, can you see that? Right in there, mm -hmm. you have to kind of thread this up in here and just click it on. You need quite small fingers, but I was able to get them on. If I can get it on, I'm sure you can. And uh, fin funnels, these are the exact same fin funnels that we saw with the new Gundam version car. This piece is different in here. And because they're not using that tiny metal, uh, tiny frame part to try to attach them all together, uh, they actually give you a piece to kind of fill that gap. So they're actually a little bit heavier than the fin funnels on the new, but uh, the, they're the exact same length. They're actually from the, the new Gundam version car. And I got a bunch of them here. And they're actually meant to kind of clip onto here. I'll do this side first. Let me see, make sure I got it facing the right way. Already he's, he's quite a bit heavier mm -hmm. now. If I didn't have the stand, he would start leaning. And they, I guess I can show it, maybe you can see it. The way it's designed, there's a little bit of a gap in here in the torso. Mm -hmm. There's actually, the way the frame is designed, a little bit of movement, it tilts a little bit. And uh, because of the weight of this, uh, this fin funnel, it will kind of tilt just that much when you load it up. And then, of course, the legs have to start supporting the weight after that. I'm going to plug these on here. Well, Bandai designed this kit for space, you know? Like, yeah, it's zero gravity. Yeah, it's a zero gravity kit. So you don't need a stand then. Okay, cool. Or in space. <laughs> <laughs> so you put these on here and they click in uh, really uh, firmly. And uh, you're actually able to kind of position them where you want you know they are heavy so you might experience some droopage so to speak over time if that's even a word Droopage. but uh, you can actually kind of move them around to get that position you want damn it looks good yeah I know with that backpack it is it's so sexy it is so sexy but we'll put them in that that neutral position here and I will turn this guy around while I talk about his weapons and whatever else so here he is now this, from this angle, you'll, you'll kind of see the stand. What I like to do is kind of position it so that the leg, the bulk of the leg blocks out the stand. And then he just looks like, looks like a god. 
god of war. He's, he's so sexy. Okay, so weapons. Basically, you're going to get what you get with a new. I mean, you get the bazooka, and it's pretty much the same design. Uh, it has this thing here, which will allow you to click onto the back of the, of the backpack. But I'm not going to worry about that. You have the high news version of the uh, rifle. That looks very similar to the, to the news version, but it does have this kind of extra piece with these details in here, which is kind of cool. Get some Gundam marker and you can actually uh, make it look pretty nice, I'm sure. And you do get a stand, here's, or a shield, sorry, here's the giant shield. And the attachment's actually quite small, just this little piece right here. And it actually is meant to fit in this little gap here. I can't even see it, but I know where it is. So let's see if I can get it in there. Like so, there he is. Just, he just became heavier. Awesome. Okay, you do get a, two beam sabers for your three beam saber handles. So one of them's going to have to go in storage, I guess. And you do also get the same stand as we saw with the new. So mm -hmm. uh, you can take this and mm -hmm. you can construct that big st stand again. And you mm -hmm. can actually attach the fin funnels. I'll take one off here just by uh, connecting them right in there. Just like we kind of did with the new. Just a different shaped piece, but it serves the same function. Okay, and last but last, not least, let's talk about what we come to expect from a version cockpit, and that is a monster set of markings. Now, this is made even bigger than what we normally see simply because of these effect decals here. Mm -hmm. And what you're meant to do with these is you're meant to take these, and it looks, these are for the ends here. You're actually supposed to put them onto your fin funnels and kind of give them this kind of, how do you say, gradiated look, mm -hmm. like it's kind of fades and it fades at the ends here. But uh, it would be really difficult for Bandai to design these fin funnels using the blue color as well. Mm -hmm. So they, instead, they gave you everything you need with the, uh, the, mar uh, the markings, the decal set. So you can choose to use them or not. Now, I, I plan on using them, but that'll be one of the last things I do. And of course, you get all the warning markings and everything else that we, we've seen with every other version car kit that came yeah, before. This decal sheet will keep you out of trouble, yeah. Sid. I mean, the kit probably would take you four and a half to five hours to build. Well, that's how long it took me. But uh, doing this decal sheet, it's probably gonna take you about the same amount of time. I said every time. Once you get down to working with water slide decals, uh, they're time consuming, but you know, it's worth the time oh, you it put is into worth it. it. So yeah. be prepared. And I know a lot of people are already starting to get these kits. Mm -hmm. They were shipping out the very first day we got them in. So I'm sure we're gonna start seeing some pictures of people who have actually done all the decal work. So uh, I'm interested to see it. And uh, if anybody's building the high new, please show me. Yes. <laughs> Maybe create a group on Hobbing TV, the high new group, and we'll put everybody's in there and just oogle them. Bosk in the radio. That's right. Like, it's a masterpiece, Ryan. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> just yeah, look yeah. at it. All right, there you have it. There's the high new Gundam version car. Of course, I'm not done. I've got a bunch of water slide decals to put on there, like I showed. And uh, I'm thinking I might like try to paint it or do something mm. with it because I just don't want to put it down. Like, I'm excited to see the decals. I mean, they yeah. look tricky. Yeah, especially on those spin funnels, yeah, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm going to play with this guy <laughs> quite a bit more. And building him has made me want to go back and like work back on my Sasabi that I hadn't quite finished. And I actually even pulled out my new gun and version car and kind of were standing next to each other and playing around with them. And, you know, that's a good series of kits we've got in the last year and a half. The new Gundam, the Sasabi, and now the High New. Like, it's been a good year for Master Grade when we talk about the quality sure. of the stuff we're getting. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm excited for the future. But anyway, Sweet. in the here and now, okay. what do we have for comments? First is Cody. Mm -hmm. Hey, Sid and Ryan. Been watching for about four months now, and I absolutely love the work you do. Keep it cool. up, guys. New episodes brighten my week. Also, I believe on the Kamen Rider AMG, it has a muscle flex gimmick in its bicep. That is correct. At least mm. the Fang Joker one did anyway. Mm. Until next time, don't forget to be awesome. Okay, well, actually, we're, we're giving away the, the heat medal at the end uh, of this episode. Yes. Uh, once, when I pull it out again, I'll, I'll play with the iron. Yeah, I remember specifically there was a gimmick for Yeah, that. they actually, I think, yeah. advertised it on uh, the packing outside that mm. you, the muscles would kind of move when you bend the arm. So, okay. Next, mm -hmm. Tater Tot. He said, Ryan, what is your take from the Kara Hobby Show and Bandai not showing off a December MG or a November RG? The RG line has always been their big release in November yeah. and the MG, MG line has only skipped the December kit once but in 2010 for the release of the PG Strike Freedom. Mm -hmm. Do you think this means that Bandai has a big PG release to announce at the end of the year or they're skipping that big December kit altogether? 
Uh, I had these same questions when I went to the Kyle Hobby show because I thought, oh, we're gonna, I'm going to see what's coming. And I did. I mean, I saw the, the Astra, the blue Astra AD, and I saw the crossbow, and I saw all the um, G Reconquista mm -hmm. kits. Mm -hmm. But uh, I also was looking for like a hint of a new RG or a hint of more M MG. And uh, there was nothing there, which leads me to believe that I don't think Bandai has like ab abandoned the idea, but of releasing kits towards the end of the year, like usual. I think we could see something big, but I think Bandai is just kind of keeping it really close to the vest for now. I mean, they've, it seems we've, we've gotten less kits this year. When you talk about MG, we've gotten less kits this year, which some people have complained about. But the quality of what we've received has been so good. Yeah. Like yeah. we got the high new, we've got the turn X, and uh, we're gonna get a Nightingale. We're, they're launching a whole new line. Like the quality seems to have just gone up that mm. this little mm. bit. So I think that uh, while we may not see, for example, MGs more frequently, when we do get one, it's gonna be a big one. So we may skip the December one this year for a perfect grade. That would not surprise me if Bandai's gonna do so it. So sweet. They gotta do it. I mean. Everybody wants a PG unicorn, and unicorn's done now. Like, if they don't release it now, they've missed the, the boat yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. So now it's now or never. But um, RG, I still think there will be one more this year. Uh -huh. But the line is still so young that you, we don't really know what's regular and what's not mm -hmm. regular when it comes to that. So only time will tell. Tokyo Model Show and then Gunplay Expo for sure. 3.0, Bandai. 3.0. <laughs> Give me another 3.0. Exactly. Next is Chris. Great episode. I was flat coating a kit and then the spray ran out. It started to spray the coat and now there are spots on the kit. Mm. Is the kit ruined or should I buy another of the same flat coat of the same brand to finish it off? The kit isn't ruined, but you should buy another of that same brand of flat coat. What you probably should do in this instance is you can get like this, uh, it's like a polish and you can just like take this cloth, put the little compound in there and then do your best to just polish off those spots they will go away if you're careful and you should probably you'll be okay like the paint will be okay but uh, just be careful and once you've got it all shiny and smooth like people use this compound to make their kits all shiny once you've got it smooth again uh, then you can put your your top coat on finally so listen to Sid that's, I went through that problem because I actually sprayed a flat coat in damp weather and it crossed oh. it over and so I'm like <laughs> this compound trying to save it because that was one of my first times I've painted obviously because I was doing it in the rain <laughs> Shao Paul mm -hmm. really good episode guys you always make my day with news reviews and geeky jokes I've been a fan of Japan culture and anime for a long time I'm 34 mm. but I just recently started this hobby and stumbled upon your site so needless to say after watching one episode I just continued watching the rest of your shows all the way back to the first one when Sid was young I cried blood from staring at computer screens, but every minute of watching your show was worth it. That's so sweet. I know, mm. tears in my eyes. But <laughs> people appreciate what I do, but you're a trooper. Yeah. <laughs> you know, watch all those early episodes. Like, we were still trying to figure out something what else. we're doing and where we're filming them and what camera angle and, yeah, learning, learning as we go. Yeah. When we were young. Yeah. Next, Weatherby. Mm -hmm. I was re watching old Gunpla TV episodes and, I, and it was mentioned that a top coat on stickers would cause a silvering effect unless done in a gloss. I'm wanting to add decals and a bit of spray to my kit and feel a flat coat would help get the look I want. However, after hearing that, I'm a little worried. In this case, only for normal stickers, I'm assuming it won't be the case for water slides or hard transfer. Is there any general advice on how to add decals and flat top coat without messing the whole thing up? All right, it seems that this is a good question. Yeah. And it seems maybe he's just a little bit confused on uh, what we were referring to like stickers I don't generally worry about the top coat that's yeah, kind of going on yeah. but um, water slide decals for sure uh, I always put the gloss coat on first for one first reason is that it allows you to move the deck around quite easy because that kit is so smooth or that finish is so smooth you can move the, the deck around till you get it where you want it and then you can you know press it down uh, stickers um, they're of course adhesive and uh, they're going to start to stick so I don't know if the gloss coat is ad as advantageous in that regard. However, even if you want to, your final look to be flat coat, you should still put the gloss coat on first. Mm. So you're going to put the gloss coat on first, then you're going to put the, the sticker or the, the water slide on. And once it's all on there, then you put the flat coat on. Now the reason for this, and they call it silvering, is because if uh, underneath that decal, 
for example, there's like tiny little pockets of air or, you know, some, there's just, it's not adhered completely to that surface of the kit. Mm -hmm. The way the light reflects is that you're kind of giving off the sheen mm -hmm. and uh, it'll just be like that, that part of the kit where the decal is will give off that reflection and not the rest of it, simply because of the air trapped under there. And you want that surface to be as smooth mm -hmm. as possible when you're putting on your sticker. So if, even if you want flat coat, gloss coat first and then flat coat at the end to get the effect you want. And if you're using water slide decals, make sure you're using your um, Mark Softener and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Mark yeah. Softener will, will definitely help to make it stick on there. I know some places maybe Mark Softener is not easily available, mm. but if you're careful and you, you I use a, like a Q-tip cotton swab mm. and uh, tissue even, and I try to get all that water out of there and then they leave it and then come back to it like after a day or whatever when any residual water has evaporated, mm -hmm. then you can put your final top coat on. Yep. Good advice, Sid. So okay. that's all the questions I have for today. What Good. Do you got for I got us? comments because, of course, we're giving stuff away. Yes. Now, uh, we were giving away two kits with this last one, two bigger ones, non Gundam, because we were showing the Nobunaga the Fool. Now, here's uh -huh. the heat metal, and somebody mentioned the bicep. Well, here's the bicep. It's, it's yes, made to move it, around, it, right? It so, bulges. It bulges because he's so strong. Yeah. Yeah, it's like looking in the Insect mirror. Insect man, yeah. It's like looking in the mirror. All right, we showed this last week, so I'm a little too crazy over. Hold that for me, sir. Okay, so we had 203 comments. So uh, the, the heat metal goes to somebody by the name of Danny. Hey, he Danny. was comment number 104. And he wrote, don't break the kits, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> He's let the box go and stand in the corner until we say it's okay. <laughs> Great show, guys. Okay, so don't break the kits, Ryan. Ryan. Even though I broke the Nobunaga. Are you Russia. getting confused between yeah. Sid and Ryan? <laughs> okay, Ryan. so that's we it. Have, we have a Bodums. You know, the scope dog is the yeah, Bodums, yeah. the, the brutish dog. Yes, and very um, cool. this goes to comment number 42 of 203, and it's by RJ Karanog. And he writes, Oh, I hope they can make new kits from the Nobunaga series. Great episode as always. Okay, so here you are. I think one Nobunaga kit we saw somewhere, is maybe it's on the way. I can't remember. I don't follow that too much, but uh, I'm sure if Bandit makes one, they'll make a few more until oh, the, yeah. the series is kind of done. Okay, so now I have more kits to give away. Oh, yes. And I'm, I'm, I'm doubling it up, Ryan. I'm doubling, doubling it up because we have live streams and the more yeah, live streams. Yeah, we're and, running out of And uh, I don't have as much opportunity to give stuff away, but what I'm going to do, uh, well, even though I say doubling it up, it's kind of, I kind of is and it's kind of not. So let me explain here. Okay. I got two kits to give away. Yeah. But they're the same one. <laughs> but they're not. No. <laughs> this one is the Buster Gundam. And I think we, back when they started releasing the recolors mm -hmm. for the uh, anniversary of the seed, uh, people were wondering, what's the difference in the color and whatnot? And we actually brought both on the show and tried to show the difference in color. Oh, and yeah, so, I yeah. This. And so, you know, here I built a Buster. And uh, I've still got parts for almost another buster in these boxes. So basically, I'm going to give these prizes away to one individual, and okay. he will have two busters. Or two almost busters. two busters. So two buster gunnums in slightly different colors, HD and all. Dun, dun, dun. Now this one, eh, it's not as cool as that one, but it's kind of the same idea. I have a couple of gyms here, Ooh. the Type-C. I actually like this gym now. Uh, I had two of these because I was messing around thinking about trying to do like um, a tutorial on how to use Plamo, extend legs mm -hmm, and stuff like mm -hmm. that, if you remember. And when I started uh, taking this guy apart and building him, I realized that the construction of this, this kit in the legs is very difficult to actually get the effect I want on camera when mm -hmm. it comes to showing, you know, how to extend legs and so oh, forth and whatever yeah, else. So, um, aside from saying like this one part of the leg, there's two whole kits in here. So, uh, two whole somebody's, kits. Getting, somebody's getting uh, the Type 2 RGM Type C HG gun. There's one who's got a little slightly longer leg. Okay, now, back in that episode. Modified by Sid. <laughs> yes. Back in that, in that episode, which I, was, I thought we'd use this, but ended up using this, I showed how to extend the legs really, really quickly, by the way, uh, just by inserting plastic into the, into the legs. And I brought out uh, the HG strike freedom gundam that i had test painted on and i brought up another version of it and I actually extend the legs of it and then we took pictures of them together kind of showing the difference so i still got these kits and uh i'm gonna give them away so oh. you're getting these two and of course you're getting like thin funnel dragoon sorry dragon parts and whatever else so 
you get two slightly modified HG Strike Freedoms. And uh, there you go. That's like a, a stack of Gundam. That's a stack of Gundam. Yes. Given away. Given away. So there'll be three lucky winners to enter into these ones. Uh, remember, comment on Hobby Link TV, the blog, yes. episode number 156. Yeah. And uh, you'll find the link with under the YouTube video. Yeah. And uh, we will definitely uh, be checking the comments and drawing a number. And if you're lucky, we contact you and you get to take these home. Or I mail them to you anyway. Yeah, he'll, he'll, they'll be mailed. You, you can't come and pick them no, up. No, you can't. Uh, but just before we end, mm -hmm. Sid, uh, remind everyone that we have yeah. a blog. Yep. Yeah called Hobbylink TV and a YouTube channel and Facebook, you know, please join us, friend us, subscribe to us, do whatever you need to do. And also with the blog, we're getting a lot of people um, putting posts up of kits they're building. Yeah, Very yeah. talented builders, actually. There's some good stuff out there. Yeah, make sure you check it out. And also there's fantastic groups who can also help you a lot with a lot of mm -hmm. the modeling questions you have. The Q&A group is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just a final reminder, you know, we work for Hobbylink Japan. So please buy your kits from us. Yep. Support us. And uh, let's talk about the rest of September. Yes. So we have a live stream next week. Then we're kind of kind of be off for an event, mm -hmm. right? And somewhere in there, I think we're going to have a chance to film one episode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe, because you think we have 18th or whatever it is? 18th, 18th is, is the, the Tokyo, Tokyo Game, Game Show. Game show. 26th, 26th is the, the All Japan Hobby Show. Okay, so what's going to happen after the All Japan Mall Show is we're going to try and get a video up as quickly as, like, as we, we can. We're hoping to. We'll anyway, so that we can everybody gets the kind of first chance to see... So and we can know. rant about the if if we see the PG we want, we yeah, can talk about oh yeah, it. we'll be talking all about yeah. it. Which which means what I'm trying to get to here is that um, I think we're going to start seeing the first of the HGG Reconquista kits uh, coming in towards the end of the month. Yes. We might not be able to get an episode of them up right away. So it might be say the first week of October or something when we start actually being able to show those kits. So just be patient if you're uh, waiting for those, you'll you'll get to see them. And uh, until next time, yeah. we'll see you later. See ya.